What are some ways that we can think about our problems and try to solve them? That's what we're going to talk about today. If everyone has to think outside the box, maybe it's the box that needs fixing. Malcolm Gladwell. See, quotes like that is why I like a guy like Gladwell, because that's outside the box thinking right there. Today, we're going to talk about some other strategies we can do to solve some of our problems we have. And just to be aware, yeah, I got COVID for the first time and my voice is all screwy. The good news is, is that my voice when I get sick starts out like this and turns into Kathleen Turner from Romancing the Stone, which is kind of nice, and then eventually goes to Sean Connery. So we'll see how this voice situation turns out. So today we're going to talk about techniques about how to solve some of our problems centered around a presentation for a conference based on a book by Cass Sunstein, where he talks about how you can get people to act, whether you nudge them in the right way. His goal was to take things and make it easy. Like you put healthy food at the grocery line checkout instead of candy makes it available and easy for people to buy. Or you set your exercise clothes up. That's the nicest take on that book. The part that kind of freaks me out a little bit is when he talks about the government nudging us in the right direction. I don't dig that at all. I don't think the government's job is beyond educating us or telling us things and then letting us make our own decisions. So when the it nudges us. Oh, I'm not great about it. But there have been some successes with nudge when you think about organ donations. What if by default, when you register to get a driver's license, it checked the box for organ donation and you can opt out? There's probably a lot of people who wouldn't mind it at all. So if someone really does care, or there was a situation where a country in Africa created a pension plan and every dollar you put into your own pension plan, puts you in a lottery to win additional money. The odds of winning this extra money was very low. However, it encouraged people to have a pension plan for the first time. So it can work very well. In my case, again, I'm trying to get people to use software, but I'm also trying to get myself to do things, you know, like exercise more and save more money. And there's things like, that I have for my own goals. And so I adapted this nudge idea. But what Cass Sunstein says is first you start out nudging. Hey, wouldn't it be nice if you did X, Y, and Z? And then you start to push a little. You know, if you could get that X, Y, and Z done by the beginning of August, that'd be great. You know, that would help the whole team. And then there's shove. You know what? This is now part of your job requirement. And if you don't do it by September 1st, you're going to be fired. We all hope in what Whatever industry we're working on or whatever project we want to work on for ourselves, we never get to the shove part. So I did a presentation about that. But what I did is I added extra steps to it. And because I'm a soft touch, I decided to come up with five phases of trying to get change with you, your family, your life, your work environment, me and my software fights. And I called them the five phases of adoption. Boy, doesn't it sound really businessy right there? So what I did is I broke them up into smaller steps at the beginning. Because again, the goal is to never get to shove. So the first step, of course, is to motivate. You want to rile people up. You want to get people excited or yourself. You're looking to start a new diet. You're looking to start a new exercise program. Or you're going to try six months without spending extra money. The first step, motivate. Those are those vision boards, what you're going to do. You're going to save for a vacation. Here's the picture of my vacation. Whatever it is you need to do in order to get yourself excited about that process. Get yourself happy about it. Tell your family and your friends. Have a kickoff party for it. Tell your friends, hey, everyone, hold me accountable. Something like that, right? You want to be able to encourage people to cheer you on. And if you don't get people motivated, you don't get people excited, that's going to be the main piece of it. There's a very famous quote by Antoine de saint Exupery. Maybe I said it last time. He's the guy who wrote The Little Prince, but my brain is so full of COVID, I can't tell you. His quote is, and it's worth repeating, if, even if I did say it last time, if you want to build a ship, don't drum up men to gather wood, divide the work, and give orders. Instead, teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. The goal is you sell people on the, on the dream you get people excited about what the end goal is going to be. 
yeah, that sucks to die, but I'm going to be able to do hikes up volcanoes in Iceland. I will be able to save money. I can go and take that vacation in Paris I always wanted to go on. Whatever you're dreaming of, that's how you get goals is you motivate, you teach people to yearn for the vast sea, whatever it is that is the vast sea in your life. So that's the most important part. And in order to do that, we have to know, again, clearly what our goals are. They should be something we can measure. They should be something that's tangible, something we can actually achieve and that have an actual benefit to us. That's really important to do. And it's important too, to an extent, that the people around you are signed on to it. If you're trying to diet and your family is like, well, forget that. We are eating cake every night for dinner. It's going to be hard on you. So if you can get people in your family to join you or to at least not eat cake in front of you, you know, that will help you a lot. And every time you make some benchmarks, some intermediate goal, maybe you just pat yourself on the back. Good job, Jill. Or maybe you get your friends, you get some sort of a recognition, you go out to the movies and maybe your friends offer to take you out to dinner or take you out to the movies, something that you can enjoy and have a good night. My next step is to equip. That means you got to get your plan together. If you're going on a new exercise program, do you have the clothes? Do you have the shoes? Do you have a schedule picked out of when you're going to do this? Do you have a plan that once you get to the gym, you know what you're going to do? Or are you going to wander around the gym looking at all the equipment like most people do and then eventually decide that you're going to walk on a treadmill for 10 minutes until you, your TV show runs out? Make sure you're equipped to get your goal that you're equipped to do the thing you're trying to do. If you're going to eat better, do you have the food in your house to eat better? I mentioned before that I suddenly was facing a health issue where I had diabetes and I tried to work on it. Slow steps, right? I was doing the thing and it happened before the pandemic. And I thought, I'm going to work on this. I'm going to work really hard on it. And I did. I lost weight. I dropped my sugar levels considerably. It wasn't enough. So I went back to the doctor. Doctor's like, no, that's not enough. Going to take a drug. Got put on Monjero. That drug needed some equipping. I needed to get foods with high protein, high fiber, weren't full of sugar, weren't full of garbage. I mean, I had a pretty good house before. I now, 80% of my meals eat whole foods, things that didn't come in packages, things that you go out into a farm and recognize. So my eating was pretty good. It was probably too much. But equipping for success is going to take you really far because I can't tell you how many people come up with, oh, you know, let's say a New Year's resolution. I'm going to exercise every day. And then they realize, oh, I don't have any exercise clothes that fit. So then they spend the next month looking for exercise clothes, getting the proper shoes, getting a gym picked out and signing up for it. And now it's two months later and you've just lost your steam, making sure that you are set and ready to go. Or if it's something technical or something that you're going to learn, do you have tutorials set up? Do you have tip sheets or some type of plan? Did you sign up for a class to learn how to play guitar? I will tell you that there are so many great resources. YouTube it, all by itself can teach you almost how to do everything. But another good step is something like ChatGBT. I wanted to learn how to use Descript software and Canva software And I asked ChatGPT, come up with a curriculum for me to show me how to use Canva to produce podcast art. And it didn't just fill out details about it. It created class-like structure about it. Then I asked for tip sheets on each of those topics. I also asked for links of other places that offered tips on that in case ChatGPT was crazy. And I came up with a whole plan based on that. So you can create learning curriculums. My friend Marty did a presentation at this at MaxDoc last year, and it was so beneficial to learn about that. And you can find out more about his podcast on thepodtalk.net. But he came up with this whole idea of creating curriculums, structured learning from ChatGPT. It's a great tip. But you can do that no matter what it is you're having to do. But the idea here is if you have a plan in place, and you're looking to make an improvement, make sure you have even your learning paths in place. Even if it's exercise, you have a a worksheet of what exercises you're going to do and maybe a step-by-step guide 
of how to do them. Maybe you don't know how to do a seated squat row. This thing is a seated squat row, but maybe you don't know how to do it. Find out. Maybe even try to test out your plan a little. Make sure that you try it. If again, if you're planning on eating more healthy, maybe before you start your big launch of your brand new plan, try a couple of healthy meals. Ooh, that didn't taste very good. Or wow, I need to get more spices. Spices will help make this whole thing better. It's camping is called a shakeout. But you want to just do something that will kick you off properly so that you know, okay, this is totally feasible. This is how this is going to work. And then comes Cass Sunstein's nudge. That means we're going to completely nudge you towards the right direction after you started your process. How can we make this easy for you? How can we show you tips and reminders? Can I sit at your desk? Can I help you with the software? Can I just be there with you, you know, in case you have any questions? Or reminders on your phone. Hi, Jill. Today's the first day of your exercise program. You know, something that will keep you going. There's also great apps like Streaks or even Todoist and Notion that you could create your own nudges inside of software. I find software nudges to be one of the more powerful things because I'm not really getting my friends involved. I tried to get my friends to remind me to exercise and it never really happened. But my software, it never fails me. And I can put whatever messages in there I care to do. Then the next step is push. Maybe sometimes you need to be a little bit more direct with your coworkers, with yourself, with your family, whichever we're doing this plan with, and you need something more. So now you're going to make some things mandatory. You know what? You know, you're finding out that your exercise plan is foiled by the fact that you're sleeping in too late. First thing you have to think of is maybe this plan needs adjustment. Maybe mornings are just not my time. Mornings really are not my time. But let's say you're fine in mornings, but you're just being lazy and you realize, oh, if I get out of bed, I'm going to have to go exercise. That's the part where you put alarm clocks in the bathroom, where you have to literally get out of bed, go turn off the alarm clocks way over there. You're you're getting out of bed. You, You know, the exercise is step two. Or... Maybe this is where you're going to put benchmarks in. I have to exercise three times per week. You make it more measurable, more clear. Even tell your friends and family who are helping you on whatever this project is to be more direct with me. Bob, you had a health scare. You have to do this exercise. Or in some cases, it's burning your bridges. I gave myself a deadline on switching over from Mac to Windows, and I took my Mac computer and I bundled up all the wires and sat it in a closet. I couldn't even turn on my Windows machine. But the primary idea was that I had both my Mac and my Windows machine sitting side by side. So I'm like, oh, I just need to get this work document done, or I just need to get this one thing done. I know how to do it in Windows so much faster. So I never used my Mac, and I never got good at it. And suddenly, I had to get good at my Mac for this podcast because that Windows machine was sitting there and staring at me all the time. Nope. It has to go away. I was officially pushed into using my Mac. Think of a way, fit your plan, your problem that you're having. It's a little bit more than a nudge. Now it's a push. What can I do to just push myself into the right direction? And then the last step is the one you always want to avoid, and that's going to be shove. Now, for work, shove means policies. This is now in your job description. Your performance review is going to be based on this. Metrics. Hey, bub. I just uh, ran a report and it doesn't look to me like you're using the software at all. In fact, I looked at 37 data points and you haven't filled out more than three of them. Or how are you filling this out anymore when you haven't updated this information in over two years? I mean, it can't be still useful, right? And, and you know, in a company, this is when leadership gets involved. But a shove is sometimes more drastic. You know, it is going to be something that screams. You'll see there's that one app place that you can make bets against yourself in a sense. I have to lose 50 pounds by this date or I have to give money to something I hate. The other political party, for example, something that you would be burned up to do. Some people give it to very nasty things. That is a huge shove for sure, but I don't recommend that. I mean, I want to make the world a better place. So instead, just pick a political party. Pick something that is just something you would hate to see get elected into office. 
but you're going to give them money unless you do this thing. Let me caution you when it comes to something like weight loss. That's hard because you have very little control over what you actually lose in weight loss. There's a lot of affecting factors in that. So I'm not going to get into this topic now, but creating a system of what it takes to lose weight and reward that or shove towards that. So instead of, for example, saying I have to lose 50 pounds, say I have to exercise four times a week for at least 20 minutes. I have to eat under whatever calories per day. I'm tracking it in this app. I can run a report and show you that I ate under this many calories a day. And I have to throw out every snack in my house. Something drastic, but you want to get to that point if you're not getting your goals. And it's sometimes, you know, it's just easy. Like I said, oh, I want to save money to go to Paris or I want to lose weight so I'm just more physically fit. What if you have a health problem? What if something serious happened? Now, I think in, to an extent, I had a health problem. And while I did pretty well in losing weight and dropping my sugar, you know, I didn't solve the problem. And I didn't go back to the doctor to see if I solved the problem. Having more of a shove at that point, I guess going to the doctor was my big shove, but probably it should have been earlier. But you understand, as soon as you hit that point where this is the wall, it can't go on anymore. I have heard of people who are getting so many health problems because of their weight or because of something they're not doing or they're overdoing. The buck has to stop right now. It just has to stop now. And that is when shove takes over. Shove is never pleasant. The one weight loss wager I made for myself is that I had saved money for a trip, for an exciting, fun trip. And I told my friend that if I didn't lose weight by this particular date, that money and that fund is going to go into my 401k. So it was a shove to me because I wanted to go on that vacation, but it wasn't bad to me or to anyone else. In fact, it was probably better. But you see how you can use this kind of shove to make it better for you. Or, you know, you're saving for something you want. And you tell your husband, I saved $500 so that I can buy a new iPad. But if I don't lose this weight by Christmas, I'm going to give you my $500 and you can buy yourself an iPad, something like that. I'm going to give you my iPad. So see how that shove really works to getting you to do what you want. This is really the whole idea behind this entire program. Again, the, the five steps are motivate, equip, nudge, push, and shove, which if you put it all together stands for MEMSP. See, now if I was really cool, come up with a cool acronym instead. Oh, I know. You could change it, the nudge, to edge, like you edge something over and it becomes meeps. Meeps is cool, right? But think of each of these steps as escalating. They're not one or the other, but they escalate towards shove. But you understand this is the whole program. So I hope you enjoy it. I, I think it's a good plan. And it's something that I've been using in software adoption for the last 15 years. So my suggestion to you is, can you come up with something very easy you've been trying to do and try to use this MEMPS plan. Remember, motivate, equip, nudge, push, and shove. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. It'll be really exciting to see the next time what I sound like. Either my voice is going to be better or I'm going to be talking like Darth Vader. And remember, our steps to getting what we actually want starts with small steps and MEMPS. Hi, everyone. Have a great week. <laughs>